So if you know me, uh, you know that I like to tinker with things and try to make uh, new tools and um, make things better as much as I can, like whether it's at work or on my own, um, just on personal projects. And I've had this personal project for quite a while, this like a uh, graph builder, and I just modified it so that it um, works sort of as a code editor. Uh, and it would possibly be useful for small projects for people who are visual learners and visual thinkers like me. Um, and I prefer to lean on spatial reasoning, so I was going to share that. Um, it's at a it's still early, but um, it's at a point where I think I could at least show it. So uh, this is the program itself, and I've shared this before. It's got these tools where you can add nodes, um, and I've changed it a little bit if you saw the first version. Um, so these nodes you can type um, text here that are attached to the nodes, and you can create edges, um, like in a mathematical graph. And if you press one of these buttons below, you get a text editor and you can add more content here. Um, and that content is hidden because that's where you would do the bulk of your editing. And then along the edges, you also have um, optional text on these edges, uh, which you may or want to see or may not. So you can select an edge here, and um, the minus E would delete an edge. Uh, this checkbox determines whether or not that that uh, box appears. And if it's off and you create a new edge, um, so say I create from here to here, it's going to automatically be off. And then you just select that edge and check it again, and it will come back on. And of course, um, whatever was there before is preserved, and you can move these boxes up and down with a slider and it's uh, pretty easy to do um, this arrow here determines how I select so or what my dragging my mouse is going to do so here I can select multiple nodes um, if I use this finger I can move around the graph and go work in another area um, and then I've got a few examples saved so you, you can see the URL here. It's just uh, aftermathhouse.com slash pathfinder. Um, I'm not sure if the HTTPS is up to date. It might give you a warning saying this site might be dangerous, but it's, it's not. I probably just need to update that um, sooner rather than later. And let me uh, load it an example here. So this is a CYOA test, which um, is sort of what I was using this for before. Um, so this one's like a story, so it's got once upon a time, and you can go left or go right, um, and then if I click this little box, it, it's it got the content here, so welcome adventure, which way would you like to go? Um, of course this is just for example purposes, there's really no story here. Uh, and so if I click on these, at the top I get different tools, not all of which are working, as you see, I don't have anything for data yet, um, and the draw tools aren't working. So. The idea behind the draw tools is eventually you could go in and mark this up, like circle areas of the graph, um, and then write maybe text describing like this is the like this section here is you know the answer after your first choice or something, um, and different graph styles. So uh, this one just has one option: it's run the choose your own adventure essentially. So you choose a starting point and you start here is the idea. So. Once upon a time, welcome adventure, which way would you like to go? You see the content and you can choose which direction you, you would like to go. So I can go left, left, unusual adventure, and then I can go on and the end, thanks for playing again. Um, and so you see that the text on the edges give you your options. So they'll generate buttons in the form. And then whichever direction you click, it takes you to um, either the left or the right. And then um, if I do this, I can see this button and that's the content that I'm going to get on the page as well as the title. Um, but what I recently did was I generated this for uh, writing code. So let's say that I'm learning how to program. And uh, first I'm just making simple programs. So I've got this HTML version 1, which if I um, Go to this content here. You'll see it's just the top of the HTML, and um, it's going to ask me. Well, it's got a uh, prompt for 16 factorial equals blank, and then it'll say the correct answer. 
and on click will run this fact 16 program and it says compute and then um, this node is just uh, the script text itself so this is just denoting where the script starts and so you can see kind of what, how the code is going to work um, just from the graph so I've got this HTML then it's going to start a script um, and then I can do an iterative or recursive algorithm to compute the factorial and then it's going to end the file so um, if we were to go to end file you'll see it's just a simple like close the script close the body close the HTML and I've got the comment like slash slash here for JavaScript um, because I'm inside a script when this is happening. And then I've got an iterative version of um, the JavaScript written in this one, which maybe would be the first algorithm I would learn if I was a student learning to program for the first time. And then later I might learn this recursive one. So when I first start, you know, this might not be here. Um, so let me go ahead and delete this out of the graph. And then later on, whenever I start learning it, instead of having to rebuild an entire web, web page, um, I can just add this in and say, oh, now I want to do um, a recursive version of the function. And then I would go in here and program, and I want it to be you know, in the script, in between the script tag and the end of the file. And then I can say this is you know, the recursive. And then I go in here and I create the recursive function. going to do that right now let me just load it again so we've got this set up and now then if I go to the programming tab I just hit refresh and that will give me all the edge options so these edges that aren't showing are just blank um, so that's just an empty box and I want to include the blank edges in my graph and then I can choose do I want to do the iterative or the recursive algorithm so let me say I want to do the iterative algorithm and then I'll hit generate code and I choose the start node. So let's say, well, I showed this one. So this one computes 16 factorial. So let me click that. And then it gives me the code I'll put together. And I would just take this oops, and copy it. Oh, I found a bug while I'm recording. Uh, it shouldn't say again down there. <laughs> um, my mouse. Uh, my setup is not great right now while I'm recording because <laughs> I've got my microphone on my lap. Um, okay, so you just do that. And then I'm just putting in this messing thing. Um, so 16 factorial, this should be the correct answer. I hit compute and I get the correct answer. Um, and then now then let's say that I want to use the recursive algorithm and let's generate the code and now I want to use HTML2 which has uh, maybe like later in a course I learned how to prompt for input so let's do this one and then let's go to go here and I would just paste it into this file now I've got a new program where it prompts for input, and I can put in 16 factorial equals blink and hit compute, and then there it is, and it this time uses a different algorithm because um, it's using this recursive algorithm. Um, as you can see here, I've got different uh, HTML, which has um, an input number here, and then the function will get the document element by ID, whatever is in that input value, and put that in the factorial function. Uh, so I noticed whenever I was taking courses, um, like I just recently took one in uh, p5.js, that I'm pretty much creating the same program over and over again, and then just editing a little bit of the code. And sometimes I even want to have two different versions. Like, uh, for example, there was this class I took recently. Well, it was that class, but um, in that class, we were doing tessellations. And sometimes we wanted to use lines, sometimes we wanted to use triangles, sometimes we wanted to show a grid. Um, so in this case, let's see what's happening. We start with the, the opening HTML, and then uh, in this case, I just went ahead and included the script 
in there, I think so. Yeah, it starts the script inside of here. Might be better to show that with the node, but um, in any case, it goes then to define all the global variables. There's a setup function, which creates a canvas and sets it not to loop. Um, then it starts a draw function, which just has a bunch of nested loops. So if you open this up, you'll see I've got, it's just looping through this i and j um, inside of a draw function and it sets the background. And then uh, I've got a op grid, which I used some codes here op, it means it's optional, you can have it or not. Um, and then I used like one A and one B to denote you need one of these, but choose either A or B. Um, and then if this was like optional, I could put like one A op or something and one B op. Um, and so uh, then we close the drawing program and then we close uh, like all the loops um, here. And then I close the program. And the reason I didn't combine this is because maybe later I would want to add something more in and then I could just delete this edge. And then I could add in more nodes and um, continue on with the code, so creating more functions and things. So let's uh, generate this code. Oh, no, I've got to refresh. Um, so let's say that I want the grid and I want to do a triangle tessellation and generate the code. And then choose a root node. Oh, I guess I've got to generate that again. So I've got to move up there. So um, let's generate the code, and I want to start up here with this HTML, and let's copy that. Save, and oh, it didn't quite work um, because the code is broken. <laughs> Xin, um, where is that at? Oh, so I had a typo. I put xim instead of dim in the triangle tessellation. So let me go back, and here is how you would edit um, or fix bugs. So I know that's in the triangle part of the code. So here's where the triangles happen. It's easy to find. I'm not having to search through code because um, I can just navigate it visually through a graph. Here's my triangle tessellation. Let's look at that and. Somewhere I put XIM instead of DIM. I don't know how that happened, uh, but maybe it made for a good example of why it's, this is a nice visual spatial reasoning um, way to use this tool. So here we go, generate code again, choose the root node, copy, I don't have the scroll bar um, either, I think, because I have the screen dimension set differently. That's okay. So, uh, that, and then, and there we go. We get a triangle, triangular tessellation um, with the grid. And then, if I don't want the grid, I just do that. Um, generate the code, and then I've got the whole code without the grid. Um, I don't have to go in and comment code and figure out where's the grid in this code. Um, but you know, if you're learning in a class and you have all that stuff, you, you probably have a bunch of stuff commented out because the teacher just changes and goes on for the next example. Um, and let's do this. Now there's no grid. So yeah, it's easy to find uh, where that's happening in the graph and it's easy to go in and change whether I want want it to be in the code or not without having to go in and comment it somewhere, comment out the block. Um, and then, uh, let's see, I, I made an if example where it does Python. Let's load that. And so um, this isn't working entirely. It is working. Uh, so it's just like, you know, final score is the player score. If this, else this, else if this, and then else that. And um, here I've got it where it branches to where this is the if, this is the else, this is the else. So if you go here, it's like if this, um, else do this. The reason I say it's not entirely working is because uh, it 
the orders of the nodes matters. So, um, for example, if, if these were like switched around, um, and this was the elif statement and this was the if statement, then it's going to go if else, if else, uh, which would be the wrong order. So I need a way to um, re-index nodes within the program, but I don't think that's going to be too difficult. I mean, I'm still working on on this in the meantime, although it's just a fun side project, so it's kind of on again, off again, uh, nothing too serious. Um, anyway, just thought I got it to a point where I wanted to share it. And uh, thanks for watching. Hope you come check it out. Um, it's here.